Recently, I massively upgraded my workstation with steel speaker mounts, SD card drawer, a fully custom streaming camera, and a sweet synthwave aesthetic. I'm really happy with how it turned out, but it seems I forgot one crucial detail. How many where to put the headphones? Sure, you can buy headphone stands, but I wanted a design that really fit in with the rest of the build and this is Maker's Muse, so I created my own. This is my Synthwave inspired wall mount headphones holder, and yes, it has RGB LEDs. Like all design ideas, I started with a sketch. My sketches honestly suck. They're rough as guts, but they really do help me start figuring out just how I'm going to make the thing I'm trying to make. There's nothing worse than firing up your CAD software of choice with a blank slate. So please, do a sketch first. It can be rough. So what is Synthwave anyway? Well, it's technically a genre of electronic music that recreates the feel of 80s soundtracks, but it has a very specific nostalgic aesthetic to go along with it. Chamfers and blocky geometry accented with lines of neon colors, either pink or purple or orange. But I'm also designing a functional object. It has to, you know, hold a pair of headphones securely, and I have a lot of headphones to hold. And something I often see disregarded is a good storage solution for the cable too. During my sketching stage, I came up with this little hook detail and it went on to form a key element in the final design. So again, sketch your concepts. I modeled the design in Fusion 360 and used an extrude and a lofted cut to create the main tapered shape, followed by lots of huge chamfers to create that low poly look I was after. When designing something that will actually be made in the real world, it's also important to take the manufacturing process into consideration. And well, you guessed it, I'm 3D printing it. With that in mind, there's no real suitable orientation to position the object if it was all one piece. There would be overhangs that would need support, or I'd have to print it weaker due to the layer lines running in the wrong direction, like a wood grain. So printing in multiple parts, it is. Here's the first test I did with some basic white PLA just to get a feel for it, and with just tape holding the sides together, it actually works pretty well. I attached it to the wall with some wall safe adhesive, and I was a little bit worried about the cable holder being too pointy and making the headphones difficult to remove, but it actually works really good. It could use a few tweaks, sure. I don't like how pointy it is and it's a little bit too thin, but thankfully the FDM 3D printing process doesn't leave any super sharp corners, so the design shouldn't damage the headphones in any way. So while the shape is somewhat interesting, I really want that synthwave inspired splash of bright color. So I settled on this design, two gray halves bisected with a slice of bright pink or purple or whatever you like, and then it'll be assembled later. But now they're separate parts, so they need to be designed to be secured together. You could use glue or push fits, but I went with good old fashioned M3 machine screws, which tighten down onto nuts on the other side, which are constrained with hexagonal bores. This is a tried and true technique for securing 3D printed parts together really well. With filament based 3D printers, it's always a battle keeping parts stuck down to the print bed, and this often results in a crappy first layer and the dreaded elephant foot effect. And honestly, pretty these parts, I actually suffered a lot from warping or that elephant's foot effect while trying to keep the parts stuck down to the bed. It's been pretty cold at night here in Australia. So adding chamfers to the undersides of parts and using elephant foot compensation in your slicer, if it has it, can help. But in the end, a quick sand with some fine grit sandpaper knocks any hide spots off. And in my experience, it's better to be a little bit too close to the print bed versus too far away because you can deal with the elephant's foot effect with some sandpaper, but if the print warps off the bed, then it's done for. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out with the gray PLA from Matt's Hub. It's a really nice sort of dark gray and the gorgeous nightshade purple from Polyarchemy, one of my favorite colors that exists for 3D printing. But yeah, we could take this one step further. It needs RGB. The RGB version is frankly ridiculous, but not all that much more complex. I still have heaps of adjustable LED strip left over from the ambient monitor lighting during my workstation build, so I designed this channel in the back to accommodate four LEDs worth of strip. And instead of 3D printing the center insert, I laser cut them on the Flux Beanbox Pro. Now what's really cool about clear acrylic 
is it transmits light to the edge so cleanly. It's incredible for edge lit effect. But here's a neat trick. If you sand the edge of the acrylic where you want the light to exit, it creates a really uniform edge lit effect, which just looks fantastic. And here's a quick demo. Here's a piece that hasn't been sanded with just clean laser cut edges. And then here's a piece next to it that has had the edges sanded. And it just makes the piece pop so much more. It looks really cool. I just love this effect of acrylic. And now it's time to wire everything up, and this is going to get a little bit tedious. So I just got some step motor wire I had lying around, cut it to equal lengths, and removed the wire we don't need. Um, let's just see it again in slow motion. Mm. A quick tip with soldering stuff like this, I touch the solder to the actual iron, and then touch the iron to the wire, and then touch the solder to the wire. It just helps to wick the solder into the wire. And with the strips, you don't want to put too much heat into them, but they solder totally fine. I just find they're so light, I have to put something heavy on top of them to hold them in place while I attach the wires. And the color coding for the RGB strips is really weird. Uh, white is ground for God knows what reason, but I just use what I had on hand. It doesn't really matter. And this is the final piece. It's a little bit flimsy, but seems to hold together fairly well. And the final assembly was a little bit tedious, but actually not too bad. Putting the strips in the back and then assembling the pieces together with the M3 screws and the nuts. And they just sandwiched in place. I didn't need any glue or anything. And it actually feels a lot more sturdy and solid than I expected. Though it's definitely a bit of a spaghetti mess of wires. But now for the moment of the truth, does it work? All right, here we go. Oh yeah. <laughs> Currently I'm just running these LEDs off the Arduino I used in my ambient monitor LED setup. So it's just running through a mood lamp range of colors where it just cycles between them. But you could reprogram this to do pretty much anything you want. It just uses a really cheap Arduino Nano. Getting them lined up and attached to the wall was actually the hardest bit of the build. I've never really done anything like this before. And I definitely struggled trying to figure out the alignments and the spacing. But with a lot of measurements and a bit of tweaking, I got it pretty close to where I wanted on the wall. And here is the final result. So there you have it. This is my Synthwave inspired headphones holder project from the start to finish the entire design process. And I overall am really stoked with the result, but there's a few pros and cons that I'd like to go through. First, the pros, um, it solves my problem perfectly. Before I was putting my headphones on like the edge of the desk or on the edge of the keyboard holder, and I'd run over the cables, which isn't great when they're very expensive headphones. <laughs> this solves that problem, no issue. It holds the headphones and I have my favorite headphones up here on the wall, keeping them in sight and at reach, but also organized, which is great. The aesthetics overall, I'm really pleased with. The LED effect with the edge lit acrylic is spectacular, I'm such, such a fan of that aesthetic and I'm definitely going to use it in projects in the future. Now I have an awesome laser cutter. Thanks Flux again for providing that. But then there's a few cons. Um, if you hadn't noticed with me setting it up, uh, I do not have the proper tools to align things on a wall properly. I don't have a level. I know. I don't know why. I've just never done anything like that. So if I was going to set this up again with four perfectly spaced uh, mounts, I would get a plan print done. So just like an A2 piece of paper with this perfect spacing I need and a level. And that way you can mark on the wall exactly where you need the points and you can attach them correctly. That's how you're sort of supposed to do it. So next time I do something like this, I will be going to the effort of getting a plan print done and I'd go by a level to make sure it's perfect. And then there's the elephant in the room, the wires. Um, anything attached to a wall with power has to overcome this issue. What do you do with the cables? Uh, and short of having something that's battery powered or running cables into the wall, so destructively putting a hole in the wall and through, which I'm not gonna do, you have to have a cable. And unfortunately, they're pretty unsightly here. Uh, you could make them a different color, uh, like white or matching the wall, but they'd still be kind of ugly. So I think I've come up with a good compromise. The version I did that had no power, it just had an accented strip in the middle, I think, is probably the best version to go with. But I have noticed in this room, I have a lot of accent lights like this purple wash behind me. And when that purple hits orange, 
it really makes the orange pop. It's sort of like how ultraviolet lights will will react with UV reactive pigments to make them glow. Uh, certain colors can make certain, other certain colors really stand out. I don't know the quite correct term for that. If you do, let me know in the comments. But I think what I'll do in future is I'll just have a very reactive color strip that when I use the other lights in the room, it makes that color pop, almost like it's got a LED or light in it. I really think that's probably the best solution to get the effect I'm after. Like the cables or the headphones kind of hide it, but I just think it's ugly and I would really prefer to have these cleanly on the wall with nothing else around them and somehow still glowing. So I'll give that a shot and I'll probably post some pictures on Twitter or on Patreon with how I go. So thank you very much for watching guys. Hope you found this design process interesting. And if you'd like to get this file to use it as inspiration or modify it for your own uses, there's links below and they're also free on my Patreon for the $5 tier upwards, you get free files, including the Fusion 360 model, which you can go in and edit the timeline. I think making a like a table mount holder with this as a basis could be very suitable for a lot of people. And some people might even want hardware to actually secure this to the wall with a screw. I don't want to do that to these walls. I want them to be left intact. That's why I used the wall safe adhesive. But you might want to just attach them securely with a screw, in which case this file is very easy to modify and there's links below. So if you found this video interesting or makes me better, consider subscribing. It's my aim to empower your creativity through technology. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later, guys. Bye.